Well, here we are again. You know the drill about icebergs by this point. Obscure trivia, separated by levels, and that's it. So just a heads up, some of the stuff in the iceberg was covered in the original iceberg video, so I'm not going to go over too into detail again on that. This iceberg was made by Reddit user Cyborg Nudoru. Thanks, baby. Alright, here we go. Sonic.exe is an old creepypasta from 2012, written by JC the Hyena. It's about a demonic entity called Sonic.exe that feeds on the souls of gamers through a... Blushy? I don't know. The story got popular in 2012-2013 and got a game made out of it. As time went on though, the story went from a classic creepypasta to a shit pasta to a troll pasta, basically. For more information, you can check out my Sonic.exe video. Covered in the original video, this was supposed to be Sonic's big 3D debut for the Saturn in 1996. But after the pretty shitty development and missed deadlines, the game was cancelled. This is true, Sonic Mania was famously handled by Christian Whitehead and Stealth, two guys who started out as Sonic fan game devs. Not only that, but also the music was composed by T. Lopes, who's been posting Sonic music remixes on YouTube for more than a decade. You can check some of his remixes from years ago, they are still banging as hell. Covered in the original video too, there's a lot of evidence about Michael Jordan's involvement with Sonic 3 score, and it's a really big rabbit hole to go dig in. Now Sonic 3's music is riddled with copyright issues, which prevent it from being really released again, though it's on Steam for some reason. For more info, you can check out this video. Spoiler alert! Uh, I believe this refers to Tails showing up at the credits of the Sonic movie to set up the sequel. I mean, when I search this, that's the only thing that pops up. Also, that makes me wonder, remember Sonic's redesign? What was Tails' original design, if anything? Oh god. Mighty and Ray are characters that debuted in the obscure Sega Sonic the Hedgehog for the arcades in 1993. Mighty is an armadillo, while Ray is a flying squirrel. After this game, both had only cameo appearances, until they made a full return in Sonic Mania as playable characters. It's also good to add that Mighty was an early version of the original Sonic design, until it was changed to Hedgehog. Hidden Palace is a cut level from the original Sonic 2. This stage was supposed to serve as a mini level you go after collecting the emeralds. You would go there to unlock the power of Super Sonic. However, due to time constraints, the song was cut off from the game late in development. The only thing left out on the game was the actual theme song from the zone, which was a huge mystery back in the day. I remember listening to that and trying to figure out how the hell could I get this song to play in the game? However, with some hackings, you can actually access the stage, but it's just an unfinished mess and you fall to your death. The stage served as an inspiration for the actual Hidden Palace song for Sonic & Knuckles and made a full return in the Whitehead remaster of Sonic 2, replacing the shitty-ass spike bit with the entrance to a Hidden Palace. Covered in the original video as well, this refers to the hoax stating that Sonic was unlockable in Melee after magazine published a mock image of the unlocked screen both with Sonic and Tails, uh, but both were never in melee. Though the devs said that they would have liked the idea of having Sonic in melee. Covered in the other video, this refers to the infamous screen in Sonic CD with that distorted face, with an unsettling music and the words Fun is Infinite, Sega Enterprises, Sign Magin, which can also mean the devil. But actually, Magin is the nickname given to programmer Masato Nishimura, who worked on Sonic CD and created the cursed image. This refers to a sentence spoken by gun soldiers in Shadow the Hedgehog, Yuji Naka being, of course, the co-creator of Sonic. Covered this already, after they showed Sonic's original design, people were outraged, to say the least. And rightfully so, the design was awful, so Paramount stopped production to fix the design. So people theorized that the redesign was actually planned, and that they were intentionally showed a bad design but then show the new one and win people over. 
covered already, he tells Zoltz he's a creepypasta that tells the story of this demonic entity that's trapped inside Sonigar. And once it's released, it murderizes you. Real spooky. This is a joke that comes from the Steve's reveal trailer for Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's a scene that shows Sonic punching Mario so hard he ends up in Minecraft, quite literally. Then he perishes. Radmobile is a racing arcade game developed by Sega and released in February 1991. This game is noticeable as it's actually the first time Sonic was shown publicly. Yes, this is Sonic's first appearance, as the game predates the release of the original Sonic game for about four months. In this game, he shows up as an ornament hanging from the rear view window. Bark the Polar Ben and Bean the Dynamite are both characters that debuted in Sonic the Fighters in 1996. Bark is a yellow polar bear, most likely designed by Masahiro Sugiyama, and Bean was based off the character of Bean and Pin from the 1988 Sega game Dynamite Dots. After Sonic the Fighters, both characters disappear forever until they had a cameo in Sonic Mania. The animated show OKKO OK had an episode on its third season titled Let's Meet Sonic where the main characters team up with Sonic and Tails and save the day or whatever. Both voices of Sonic and Tails reprise their roles for this crossover episode. This one is kind of science-y to explain, so I'm just gonna read the wiki article here. Sonic Hedgehog is a protein that, in humans, is encoded by the SHH gene. It is the best known in the ligand of the hedgehog singling pathway. Others are the Desert Hedgehog, DHH, and the Indian Hedgehog, IHH. It plays on the key role of the development of animals from insects to mammals. It is involved with organogenesis, including the growth of digits on limbs and the organization of the brain. Sonic Hedgehog is an archetypal example of a morphogen as defined by the Louis Wolpers French flag model, i.e. a molecule that diffuses to a form a concentration gradient and has a different effect on the cells that develop in the embryo, depending on its concentration. Sonic Hedgehog is also active in adults, for example, it controls the protein of an adult's stem cells, and it has been implicated in the development of some cancers. So yeah, that's that's it. It's just a protein name after Sonic. Also the same with Robotnik. cover this one too, Nazo is the name given to an unused supersonic transformation from the original Sonic X series. The Japanese ad for the anime showed this transformation, but it was never seen in the show. The Sonic fandom named this boy Nazo and used him in a bunch of fan work. The Grinch Leaks refers to a hoax leak of a set of playable characters for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This play league included Banjo-Kazooie, Gino, Isaac, Chorus Kid, and Shadow. The image was loaded to 4chan in 2018. Not 100% sure about this one, but I think it refers to a track from Shadow the Hedgehog game, but more specifically a remix of a track from the game by artists Enflo and Lisa. This song that absolutely fits Shadow apparently was released to promote the game and uh, it's Shadow the Hedgehog, baby. I thought this one would be simple, but I just can't find much about it. I mean, I guess it has something to do with real life photos used as graphics in the game. Or does this have something to do with the picture taken by Sega during the development trip? Or maybe it's the drama zero that gif, which is this picture in the files of the game? I, I don't know. I think this has to do with the 25th anniversary of Sonic that was held in 2016. Uh, the event and stream was sponsored by Totinos. That's it. Maybe there's another meme associated with this. Uh, I don't know. You can do it, Sonic! You can beat the Totinos! Cover this one already, Ashura is a name given to a glitched Sonic sprite from Sonic 2. While using the debug mode and spawning a bunch of waterfalls, Sonic's palette goes crazy and it changes to green and black headshot. Sonic fandom dubbed this guy Ashura, and just like Nassau, it gets a bunch of fan art. Not too sure about this one, but I think it has something to do with an unused line of dialogue in Shadow the Hedgehog, but I don't really know, I try looking look into anything else and it's just fan art of Shadow smoking. Sonic made his debut in the Super Smash Bros. series with Super Smash Bros. Brawl in 2008, 
And if you remember, that game had a story mode focusing on the characters going around trying to stop this taboo guy. And, uh, spoilers, by the end of the story, which is kind of lengthy for fighting game standards, Sonic shows up and cripples Taboo. Because of Sonic's late appearance in the story mode, people have speculated that Sonic was maybe a late addition to the game? Cover this one too. In Sonic Mania's Hydro City song, you can hang on to a change and press left, 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 right, 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 up, 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 and the next time you go to one of those speed booster things that grab you from the head. A clip from video game Donkey Place. This is from his best of 2016 video. Strangely enough, there was a TV ad for Sonic's YouTube channel on Adult Swim, featuring Sonic and some mysteries about the character or something. And it concludes with follow the clues. Maybe this was an attempt to an RNG? I don't know. Sonic Unleashed is kind of like the first game when the friends of Sonic were kind of left behind, as the game only has Sonic, Tails, Amy, and that's it. Professor fucking pickle! But apparently Knuckles and Shadow were said to appear in the game, but were cut out. Shadow gets a mention, though. I don't really know what leak this refers to, it could be the specific leak of, or all the leaks. Basically every time a leak of the movie would occur we would get another look at the hideous design, but other than that, I don't really know. Talk about this one too in my original video and my BONUS video as well. Honey was a cut character from Sonic the Fighters, based off the character Honey from Fighting Vipers. It was re-added to the 2012 re-release. Sonic Extreme, not to be confused with Sonic Extreme, they literally sound the same, is a game prototype that was found in 2011 inside an XDX unit. The game seems to be a skateboarding, snowboarding game, using some of the assets from Sonic Heroes. People also speculate that this build is an early concept of what would become Sonic Riders. This character is one of Sonic's earliest design. By then he was just a rabbit that could grab stuff with his ears and throw them. Also apparently he's the name of Cream's dad, but I think that's going a little off track. Covered already, just Shadow's early name, nothing more. Covered it already as well, early prototypes of what would become Knuckles Chaotix. It has the same rubber band mechanic, but this prototype uses Sonic and Tails. Cover this one too, Madonna was Sonic's love interest early in development of the franchise. She was basically what Pauline is now, but it was cut and, again, they never attempted human interactions with Sonic ever again. I cover most of these, Jesus. This refers to an early concept of the sound test screen in the original Sonic game. The screen features Sonic the Hedgehog Man and included an early version of Vector the Croco. These are two characters from Knuckles Chaotix. Heavy is um, a heavy robot with invincibility, and Bomb is a small robot with the power of exploding upon being touched. These characters were made by Robotnik, but later turned on him. This was a plushie made by Sega to promote the release of Sonic Adventure 2. However, since it's been like 20 years now, the plushie has become pretty rare and the prices go up in insane digits. For more information, check this video out. This could refer to two things, how to access the level select screen where you have to play B, A, right, A, C, up, down, and A, or Barracuda, or another way to access this is to actually slap your cartridge across the face and it takes you to the level select. If I remember correctly, this occurs as a failsafe for an unstable connection with the cartridge and the console. Instead of crashing, the game takes you to this screen. Can Panders was one of the writers for Sonic Archie comics, from his initial run until like mid 2000s. He started writing stories for the magazine, I think for around issue 11. He's responsible for adding a bunch of new original characters and sometimes taking the plot to extremes. It's kinda infamous now since he sued Sega and Archie for the use of his characters, and after surprisingly winning the case after his contract papers mysteriously disappeared, the Sonic comic had to introduce a plot device that would erase all of Panders' characters from the canon. Now he writes stories about anthropomorphic fetishes. 
The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog had a pretty infamous line, that one being... Snooping as usual, I see. The use of the word pingu became a very popular meme among Sonic fans, and it was one of the main weapons used by the YouTube Poop Warriors. This line was referenced again in an episode of 2014's Sonic Boom. Ah, Sonic the Hedgehog! Snooping as usual, I see! Cover this one too, the Sonic statue is a strange statue that was found on a route on the Mi region of Japan. People speculated about the statue, where it came from, and how long it's been there. After years of searching, it was discovered that the statue was the property of the late Mr. Yuji Kodera. And behind the statue, it's a pretty sad and heartwarming story, actually. For more information, I'll recommend this video. Hard Times was an unreleased song by the band The Jetsons. This song was recorded in 1982, but never saw the light of day. The thing is, one of the band members was none other than Sonic 3 composer Brad Boxer, a guy who regularly contributed with Michael Jackson. Since this song was unreleased, he used it as a theme song for Ice Cap Zone. The similarities are undeniable. If you want to listen to the song, I'll link it in the description. Simon Way is the name of the guy who dumped one early prototype of Sonic 2 onto the web after being discovered in Asian markets. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Game Gear, if you fail to collect all the emeralds, uh, you get this ending. The hell does this mean? Tails died? And Sonic shown regret? What? I didn't find anything definitive in this one, but I can guess that if the Shadow of the Game was successful, it would have gotten a sequel or spin-offs or whatever, basically becoming a separate series on its own. Kinda wish they took that risk more often, I would love to see a game about Blaze. This refers to the earliest known prototype of the original Sonic. It was shown in April 1990 in the Tokyo Toy Show. Taking a look at the screen, we can notice different graphics, designs, and even this weird battling designed by Nao Toshima, and seen in this art piece. The prototype was to be added to the Sonic Mega Collection, but Sega apparently lost the ROM. Nobody can find it. This prototype is now considered the holy grail of the Sonic fandom. This is a ride that was released in December 1991 only in Japan, though an English version of the ride also exists. This ride is part of the Sega Waku Waku line, and it was basically an educational ride with Sonic patrolling the streets and keeping it sane from Dr. Eggman. I believe this has to do with the lock-on technology cartridge. When you lock on Sonic 2 and 3, you get those games with extra content. But if you lock Sonic 1, however, you get Blue Sphere, a game that is just the special stage from Sonic 3. And if you play around with the values of the game, you can actually get a shit ton of stages. You can get about 124 million stages. You go, Blue Sphere guy. In the Wii and PC version of the Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing, the devs used a, a Sonya fan art by a DeviantArt user Art by Rihanna for a floor graphic. One of the devs at Sumo simply used the fan art as a placeholder while researching official artwork to put in the game. And apparently, the dev thought that this was official artwork? <laughs> According to the artist, everything has been resolved now, and the image has been patched out of the PC and consoles version. Except maybe the Wii version. Uh, I think this refers to an unused track for Shadow the Hedgehog. Researching this, I found the song Who I Am, an unused song that was supposed to be the main theme of the game. And for Broken, I think it's just another unused song, but I'm not too sure. This refers to Sonic 16, a mock prototype for a game based off the animated series Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sad I Am. This is not an actual gameplay footage or a prototype, it's just a mock-up showing what the game would might have looked like. After the showing of this prototype, Yuji Naka was displeased with the slow speed of the game and ultimately gave the project a thumbs down. It's also important to know that the design was put together by Peter Morawick, the designer of Comic Zone. Cover this one too, this refers to an unused stage from Sonic CD, a stage that would have possibly taken place right after the first stage. Sonic CD's code refers to the zone as R1, R3, R4, etc. 
but the game completely skips R2. No idea what the stage was called, but we can see a bit of it through the cinematic and some spies at the taxman rip while porting the game to the phones. Cover this one as well. After Sonic and the Black Knight, Sega ran a contest to see what people wanted to see in the next game. These options including Wild West and Ancient Greece. However, nothing came of it and the third storybook game was never made. Absolutely true, Alex Kidd was Sega's mascot during the 80s and a bit before Sonic hit the scene. Since Alex Kidd wasn't cutting it as a mascot to compete against Mario, Sega designed Sonic as the main force of the company and absolutely destroyed Alex Kidd, who, other than cameo appearances in racing games and stuff, has never had an official game since 1990. Uh, talking seriously? No, they're not. Talking jokingly? Of course they are! At least I wish they were. I wanted to hear Dean Bristow saying piss rock. Cover this one too. Sonic's personality was based off Bill Clinton, his gloves of Michael Jackson, and his shoes off Santa Claus. Sonic Paradox is an animation channel that focuses on Sonic themed animation, and apparently they got hacked? They temporarily have to move to another channel and upload all of their backups there, since Google wasn't really helping the situation. Fortunately, they eventually got their channel back and used this to push an animation angle, saying that Robotnik took over the channel. Good stuff. Um, all I found about this one has to do with that internal document of Sonic 06, the one that states that Blaze is a shame of her, um, chest size. Hey, look what time it is! It's time for the next one! Sonic Cafe was a Japanese mobile phone gaming service. For a monthly fee, you could download exclusive phone games. The service ran from 2001 to 2007. Apparently Shadow was supposed to be in PlayStation All-Star Battle Royale, but it was cancelled along with every single piece of extra content for that game. Tiara Bobowski was a character that was supposed to debut on the cancelled Sonic Extreme. She would have been one of the four playable characters before the dev went back to the idea of having Sonic as his whole protagonist. She was also supposed to be a love interest for Sonic to create some tension in the story, but I guess we will never know her original purpose. Tiara was designed by Chris Sen, lead designer for Sonic Extreme and uh... When Sonic 06 was about to release for the 360 and PS3, a Wii version was also announced, but was never released. We never got an official reason as to why the game was cancelled, but could have been because since the games were already rushed to hell for other consoles, they just didn't have enough time to make a Wii version. Or maybe they saw how the game was crap and just skipped it. The Wii did get an exclusive Sonic game though, with Sonic and the Secret Rings. Baldi's Basics is a meta horror game by Micah McGonagall. The objective is to collect pages without being caught by your creepy ass teacher. McGonagall said in an interview that the main inspiration for the game was Sonic Schoolhouse, a game he never played while growing up, but felt really creeped out upon seeing it. Apparently there's this rumor that Knuckles' croissant was originally supposed to be uh, the Nike logo. However, this branding deal fell through and they changed it. I don't believe this is a thing though, but I just can't find much about it. It seems to be just a rumor. Cover this one too, Genocide City was the infamous name of an unfinished zone for Sonic 2. The song was never really completed due to the time constraint, but a part of it was re-added to Metropolis and that's why the song has three acts. The name was most likely a placeholder just because it sounded cool to some Japanese dev. No issue there. Another name for the song was Cyber City Zone. When Sonic Lost World released on PC, Sega held a launch party in London. This event was held on Halloween 2015 and uh, got a little out of control. People got pretty wasted due to bad communication between the community manager and the open bar staff. Everyone thought all the drinks were free, but only the Sonic theme was, and it was just a giant mess. I'll link you this video by someone who was actually at the event. Cover this twice. Puffle Mail is a Sega CD game that, when was originally about to be localized to the West, was planned to change the design of the game for a Sonic one. 
The main character was supposed to be Sonic's long lost sister. Not that one! However, the plans fell through and Puffle Mail was released without changes. This is an unreleased puzzle game featuring Sonic and uh, original characters. The game was designed by Bubble Bubble's Fukio Mitsuji and was supposed to be released sometime in 1992. The game was never released due to bad location testing in Japan and it was considered lost until arcade board collection Showtime revealed that he had a working board back in 2016 and people were finally able to play the game at a show in 2018. This is nothing but fan theories at this point. I guess there's a theory out there that how Sonic is Silver's dad, but there's a pretty interesting one saying that Shadow and Amy are his parents, but eh, it's just fan speculation. This is an Amiga game developed by Kaiko and released in May 1991 in Europe. This game was notable for having a bunch of parodies to other video game characters as enemies, such as Mario, Bubble Bubble Dragon, and uh, Sonic. This being the first time Sonic showed in a home video console, although unofficially. Cover this one too. This is an internal document Sega developed to explain the lore and expand everything about Sonic. It features a lot of weird stuff, like having Dr. Ovi Kintover and Sonic being a brown hedgehog and then transforming to Sonic. Fighters Mega Mix is a crossover game featuring several characters from Sega games, like Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers. This game has some wild unlocks though, like the Hornet car from Daytona USA and uh, AM2's um, Palm Tree. Bar Campina are also unlockable. This was a Twitter post by Sega tagging musician uh, Marion, Marion, I don't know, for some reason. This happened in 2016 and people speculated that he was somehow involved with the music of the next Sonic game, but nothing came from it. Sonic X ran from 2003 to 2006 and it was uh, pretty wild. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Beginning with Season 2, the show started adapting some video game plots, some including Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, and Sonic Battle. After the show ended, some edited scenes of Sonic with plays starting to pop up and people started to speculate that Season 4 will cover Sonic Rush and Sonic 06. However, this was just a hoax. Kavan Armani 456 is a former gaming commentator, covering franchises such as Sonic and Mario. I never really watched the guy and never heard of him, actually, so I'm not going to add any personal opinions here. For what I can gather, this guy started having a lot of heavy personal issues and left YouTube in 2018 to seek mental health. He later came out stating that he was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and that he doesn't feel ready to return to making videos. I couldn't find much about this one, so I'm just going to guess it's kind of like the same situation as E.T.'s landfill, just a bunch of buried copies of Sonic 06. Uh, I don't know, sorry. Uh, this is another one. I have no idea what this is. Something about ReZero? No idea. No, it's not. No, it doesn't. This is a 2015 uh, minigame game developed by Arcane Kids. It's a collection of minigames that disguise themselves as unfinished Sonic games, but they're actually kind of like a critique to the Sonic fandom. This game was pretty big when it came out, it was really fucking weird. You need to take a look at this yourself, you'll be in for a ride. Now this is not in the iceberg, I decided to add this one in the Abyss section because I don't think I ever heard anyone talking about this. Uh, it's kinda, kinda like a big deal here, okay? Okay, are you ready? Tails is a female in the Latin American dub of the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic said I am. For some reason, the dubbers decided to portray the characters as female, going by the name Colitas, or Little Tails, and the name of the character was Vivi instead of Miles. No idea why this happened, but it also carried to Sonic said I am. The Latin American dub of Sonic X fixed this. No idea what this means exactly, um, um, does it have something to do with the fact that lock-on technology was complete bullshit? and it was just a way to experience Sonic 3 how it was originally intended because they ran out of time to finish the game for one cartridge? Uh, no idea. 
This refers to a failed proposed Sonic the Movie for 1995. The movie was written by Richard Jeffries and produced by MGM and an early DreamWorks. The movie was never greenlit as MGM dropped out of the deal without a clean reason. Some believe it has something to do with creative differences between Sega and the studio. Also some Hollywood greed, as mentioned by Jeffries in an interview, but no idea what happened here. The plot is pretty wild though, you can check it here. Yef is a fan character used in a Sonic ROM hack released in 2011. The character got popular due to Ant's dude covering the subject of Sonic hacks, and it now it's kinda like a cult following thing. Well, there you have it. All done. The one thing I don't really like about this iceberg image is how the Abyss section is almost all just memes and not actually obscure creepy stuff. But whatever, there's a good number of Sonic trivia here. It was pretty cool to cover. Now unless we get another Sonic Iceberg with like ultra obscure information, I don't think I'll be covering another one. So for now, no Sonic Iceberg 3 and Knuckles. But I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a blast to make. But that's it for me now. Till the next time, stay safe boys. And have a happy new year.